In the early 1970s, new theories strengthened the likelihood that a proton does not live forever. But how is one to reveal, experimentally, its presumed truly minuscule chance of decay? How could the evidence be gathered? Since their presumed lifetime is an average, some protons should live longer and some more briefly than 10 to the power of 34 years. Place enough zillions of them in a detector and at least one proton might decay during a few years of observation. Frederick Rhinus was among the surge of scientists considering experiments to demonstrate the proposition. Toward the end of the 1970s, physicists from his neutrino group at UC Irvine joined with others at the University of Michigan and Brookhaven National Laboratory to build a large underground detector. The design was largely a creation of Lawrence Sulak, a young scientist at Michigan. It would be filled with purified water and surrounded by photomultiplier tubes. As particles traveled through the detector, they would produce distinctive cones of light. Proton decay, though extremely rare, could presumably be observable by prompting a particular pattern of light. IMB, the Irvine Michigan Brookhaven detector, was a nucleon decay experiment and neutrino observatory located in a Morton Salt Company's Fairport mine on the shore of Lake Erie in the United States 600 meters underground. It was a joint venture of the University of California, Irvine, the University of Michigan, and the Brookhaven National Laboratory. Like several other particle detectors, it was built primarily with the goal of observing the proton decay, but it achieved greater fame through neutrino observation, particularly those from supernova SN 1987A. IMB consisted of a roughly cubical tank about 17 times 17.5 times 23 meters, filled with 2.5 million gallons of ultra-pure water which was surrounded by 2048 photomultiplier tubes. IMB detected fast-moving particles such as those produced by proton decay or neutrino interactions by picking up the Cherenkov radiation generated when such a particle moves faster than the speed of light in water. Since directional information was available from the phototubes, IMB was able to estimate the initial direction of neutrinos. Ground was broken at the salt mine in 1979, the water tank for the detector itself was finished in 1981. By the end of summer 1982 the detector was operating at full capacity. The first results were published in 1982. This volume of water contains on the order of 10 to the power of 31 protons. In one year of observation no proton decay event was recorded. This puts the half-life of a proton at or above 10 to the power of 31 years. In 1987, it gained fame for detecting 8 of the roughly 10 to the power of 58 neutrinos emitted by supernova 1987A. This discovery was completely unexpected. Supernovas as near as 1987A are extremely rare and virtually unpredictable. The detector collected data until 1991. In 1991, the Japanese government agreed to fund the proposed Super Cameo Con to look for nucleon decay. The new detector would also advance capabilities for neutrino research. At a height of 130 feet and a diameter of 130 feet, its cylindrical frame would be nearly 20 times the size of the predecessor Cameo Cond. The new structure would contain 50,000 tons of water. Meanwhile, the IMB project had ceased to exist and Takaki Kajita invited IMB scientists to become part of the Super K experiment. An initial responsibility for the Americans was to detach the 1,800 photomultiplier tubes from the IMB detector and ship them and related items to Japan. Once there, the Americans constructed the outer detector. 